Hi there. This is Ryan Malloy here at the Worldwide Center of Mathematics. In this video, we are going to discuss problems with half-life in calculus. Now, for those who don't know, half-life is a term that comes up in physics and chemistry that is used when describing how quickly something decays. There are a number of substances in nature which decay exponentially over time, and what will typically happen is, for example, in 24 hours, half of the substance will have decayed. And then in the next 24 hours, half of what was remaining will decay, and so on and so forth. So in that example, whatever substance we are talking about would have a half-life of 24 hours. So before we start discussing some problems that might use half-life, let's come up with some kind of formula to track the behavior of such an object. It's frequently written n as a function of t, where n is the number of some substance, it might be number of grams or number of atoms, and t is time. In this case, we'll say that t is measured in hours. Now, this formula is typically written with n0, which is the original quantity of something, or how much it starts off with, times 1 half raised to the power of t divided by the half-life, which we'll call h here. So again, we have our initial quantity, which stays the same, and then this part represents the exponential decay. Taking one half, raising it to the power of t, divided by the half-life. All right, let's put some numbers in here. Let's say that we're starting off with 5,000 atoms of francium. And we'll say, for the sake of this problem, that francium has a half-life of six hours. It's, in truth, it's much shorter than that, but we'll work with that for now. And we'll say f of t is equal to 5,000 times 1 half to the t over 6. OK, well, there's plenty of problems that could arise when you're given a function like this. For example, you might say, what is the instantaneous rate of change of the number of molecules of francium at the moment of 18 hours. We'll try that. So what we're really asking for is f prime of 18. Well, that's not too difficult. First, we'll just take the derivative of this. Find that f prime of t is equal to, take out the constant, 5,000. And so here we have an exponential function. What we want to do is take the natural logarithm of the base, natural log of 1 half, times this, times 1 half to t over 6. And since we're employing the chain rule, we want to take the derivative of this function here, which, of course, is just 1 over 6. So there's a lot going on here, but it's easy enough to simply whip out your calculator, plug in 18, just throw the 18 in here, see if we can simplify that a little bit. So we get 5,000 times the natural log of 1 half, which is going to be a negative number, by the way, times 1 half, 18 divided by 6 is 3. And one sixth. Okay. One half to the third power. It's gonna be one half times one half times one half. That's one eighth. We can simplify further by combining these two numbers together. We get one over forty-eight. over 48. Okay. And from here, again, you can simply take out your calculator or use a tool online to figure out what the natural log of 1 half is. Multiply all these quantities together, and what that gives you is the instantaneous rate of change of the number of francium atoms at time t equals 18 hours. 
And that's just one example of, of a type of problem that could come up with this sort of formula. But there's plenty of others. You might be asked, what is the maximum rate of change of the number of francium atoms with respect to time? In other words, at what point is the number of francium atoms decreasing most rapidly? Or you might be asked something more abstract. Simply be given a formula like this with the half-life and be asked, what is the area under this curve from t equals 12 to t equals 1,000? There are all sorts of different problems that might come up. But essentially, it's no different than any other exponential function. My name is Ryan Malloy, and we've just discussed problems with half-life in calculus.